Barker here for the second Halloween episode to talk about witches and magic but on Five Live it's actually quite dark in here now isn't it and really candles aren't terribly safe so ah, let's try again oh well that's much better I can see a lot more now um, this darkness of Halloween is really quite impractical um, so anyway, I'm here again on behalf of um, On Fife Libraries uh, to talk to you a little bit about my series Pickle Witch and Jack. And um, I'm Claire Barker, by the way, a children's author. I write about ghosts and witches. Um, there's an episode before this one, if you want to watch that as well, where I talk about nature magic um, and finding objects that have magical, magical, just stuff you would find um, rather than buying lots of plastic stuff which is decidedly unmagical, really. Um, anyway, so today I was just going to talk to you about Grimm's, Grimoires. Now, a Grimoire is a witch's book of spells, or she might write down all the different ingredients she might put in a spell, um, or secrets, or something like that. And so I made a little Grimoire here, and this is just paper, which I've stained with tea, you know how to do that sort of thing. And then I put it on a radiator to dry, and... Um, then I wrote in it there with ink that I made. I made some walnut ink. I've got it here actually. Here's some walnut ink and it's really just made with um, the husks of walnuts and vinegar. But it's very, very good ink. You can see there. Bop, 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 bop. There's some ink and it smells a bit vinegary to be honest. Um, <laughs> but people have used walnut ink for centuries. Monks used to use it. Um, and actually in the back of Pickle Witch and Jack there is a recipe to make walnut ink. Uh, the walnuts fell, well they're falling now in the autumn so if you can find some walnuts to make ink, but you can also make ink from all kinds of things like blackberries or beetroot or all those sorts of things. Anyway I made this little grim and so it means that I could just sort of write any little things that I find in it, any spells. Or or find things in it, like a leaf that I've written on, or whiz crackers. There you are, that's quite magical. That's a wish leaf. <laughs> um, so, I'm going to read you a little bit now from Pickle Witch and Jack. Uh, this is a bit further on in the series. So, as I say, it's about a very wobbly friendship, about two very different characters. Very sensible, clever Jack, who hates getting in trouble and um, extremely naughty, grubby pickle witch who doesn't give a fig about getting in trouble at all. Um, and the two of them together, well, as I say, a very unlikely friendship. Um, they've been going through a bit of a difficult period recently where uh, Jack's really quite fed up with pickle witch and because she keeps stealing his cake, she won't wear the uniform, she gets in trouble all the time and what he wants to do is win the inter-school quiz championship. So he makes up a story uh, to try and keep her away while they're doing the quiz. But what Jack doesn't know is that at the quiz, the other school are not very nice and they're bullies really, and they threaten the team. They say, you mustn't win or else. And Jack turns to his team and asks them to stand up for them, but they, they don't because they're scared too. So what's Jack to do? But Pickle Witch turns up anyway. And this is the spell that she uses. Rooks and ravens, jays and wrens, sparrows, starlings, be my friends. She hoiked up her dungarees and clambered onto the windowsill. Her hands became a blur as she wrote faster and faster. Swirls and strange shapes and symbols pulsing through the mud. Claw, beak, mighty feather. Blackbirds, buzzards flock together slow, then fast, then supersonic. Make my magic. Megatronic. A sharp draught sprinted around the room, carrying with it familiar scents, mists and moss, frost and smoke, earth and ash. Time's pendulum stopped swinging for a brief moment, and Jack became aware of the thrum of beating wings getting closer louder and louder. It was like the noise he had heard that fateful day in the cemetery behind the school, only now it sounded like the pounding war drums 
of an advancing army. Something big was on its way. All at once, Picklewitch flung open the muddy windows and, like feathered hand grenades, hundreds of birds hurtled through. The spell had summoned them from the telegraph poles and the hedges, from parks and gardens, called them from the dark, tangled woods and car parks and school sports fields, from the hills and farms. They poured through in a torrent as if someone had pulled the plug out of the centre of the auditorium and all the birds in England were being sucked down a drain. Gangs of squ squabbling sparrows mobbed the Brutus team, sharp beaked starlings pecked at their hair while woodpeckers hopped up their trouser legs and stabbed at their kneecaps. Bossy yellow-eyed seagulls stomped all over their desk, magpies stole all of their shiny blazer buttons, pens and badges. It was really very funny and the audience erupted into gales of laughter. Then, just when the Brutus team thought they could take no more, it was the swallow's turn to shine, swooping in at top speed, bursting through. Fighter pilots in formation, they fired poo, rat a tat tat all over their smart navy blue blazers. The final straw was when a family of owls landed on their desk and stared relentlessly at Barry until he cried. Jack looked up at the clock. There was only ten seconds left. The quiz master battled valiantly on while the crowd chanted, Immaculates! Immaculates! They stomped their feet until the whole building shook. Headmistress Silk was standing on her chair and wolf whistling. The teams were still neck and neck and St Immaculates only needed to get one more question right to win. Jack had everything crossed that it was a question he could answer. Please let it be on fossils, or weather patterns, or the 22 times table. So now to the final question. What, bellowed the quizmaster, shielding his head from the sharp claws of a robin, is the term for a witch's book of magic? Jack stood up and slammed his hand down on the buzzer so hard that he broke it. Grimoire, he laughed in disbelief. It's a grimoire. Correct. The mighty gong clanged and the crowd erupted in thunderous applause. So there you are. That's Pickle Witch and Jack. Um, as I say, there are, there are two in the series. Uh, this one here is about when Pickle Witch's cousin comes to the garden and his name is Archie Cuckoo and in the way that Pickle Witch is not a typical witch this way that we think what a typical witch is you know she wears dungarees and that she doesn't like cats and she doesn't have a broomstick um her cousin Archie is a witch and he's a boy because uh, we always think of witches being girls but it's not the case at all and Archie is everything that Jack would like in a friend. He's ever so smart, and he's ever so clever, and he's ever so polite. But Archie is not at all what he seems. Jack? Archie looked around with a smile. Who is Jack? <laughs> this silly fop doodle, said Picklewitch affectionately, yanking him out from behind the tree, is my best friend Jack. Say hello to Cousin Archie Jack. Jack was lost for words, primarily because Archie was not at all what he had been expecting. For a start, he wasn't wearing a raggedy cloak or carrying a wand, nor was there an earwig to be seen. He wasn't even wearing a pointed hat. In fact, Archie was the opposite of everything Jack had imagined. Dressed in an immaculate grey tailcoat with a silk horizontal striped waistcoat beneath, this boy was a picture of order, not chaos. In his gloved hand he held a smart leather briefcase with silver clasps and a combination lock. A gold watch chain dangled from his pocket and not a hair on his head was out of place. Archie Cuckoo couldn't have looked less like a witch. Happy Halloween.